All right, thank you, Mike. Welcome, everybody. Welcome back. Hope everybody had a, a great summer, uh, but best time of the year right now. So uh, we're, we're certainly looking forward to, to getting started. Uh, I think our guys have really had a tremendous summer. Excited about some of the growth uh, you see in the team. Uh, you know, first physically, I want to compliment the job that our strength staff uh, has done with our guys throughout the summer. Uh, that's that's kind of their their most important time of the year. And, you know, Benny Wiley, uh, Brian Kagan, Scott Kolok, Cesar Martinez, uh, Frank Davis, they've done a tremendous job with our group along with our, our uh, training staff, our nutritional staff headed up by Tiffany Bird. Uh, they've all been phenomenal through this time. So uh, our players have really invested in our summer program. It's fun to, to watch them run around a little bit yesterday um, and see just some of the differences in their bodies. You see uh, guys that have really grown, developed, uh, guys that have handled weight loss or weight gain the way that we want them to. Um, and so just uh, there's a lot of momentum, a lot of excitement around this time of year. So we certainly can't wait to get started. We've worked hard on a uh, on having a great schedule. We think we've got it put together and, uh, and certainly looking forward to getting going here tomorrow morning. Um, a couple of uh, quick announcements. Um, first on the staff end of it, uh, Blake Kinsey has been a long time uh, fixture in our equipment uh, department has left for another opportunity. I uh, want to tell you know Blake and his family how much we appreciate his years of service. You're talking about a guy that's uh, that's been here at OU for a long time, done a lot for us. So we'll, we'll certainly miss Blake and, and his family. Um, Adam Whitworth, who's been with us here for the last several years, will move up uh, into that position. Uh, who's also done a tremendous job, excited for his new opportunity. And then we've hired uh, Chase Brown to, to replace that existing position. So uh, a couple changes there in the equipment staff. But Brad Camp and those guys have always been great. And uh, look forward to that continuing on. Um, as far as players, Guys that will be out for camp, uh, uh, Caleb Kelly uh, and Jordan Kelly still uh, still recovering from uh, from their from the procedures that they had earlier this year. Uh, both doing extremely well, uh, but certainly too early to speculate on on anything that involves the season. Uh, limited here early in camp. Uh, Kenneth Mann had a had an injury here in spring that we've been working through. He's made great progress, but we'll be limited here early in camp. Uh, Everybody else uh, is doing well, uh, pretty healthy going into this, and uh, looking forward to getting started with everybody. So uh, with that, we'll go to questions. Okay, John Hoover had his hand up. Yeah, I'm first. <laughs> <laughs> so we're talking about offensive line. Uh, there's a lot of question marks, obviously, a lot of personnel. Um, Michael Thompson's shift to offensive line, is he going to be is he gonna be able to realistically contribute, or is that more of a depth situation right now? No, it's uh... – it, it was both, honestly. Uh, looking at it in spring, it was an opportunity to get him reps, and he's very talented at, at that position. He's sometimes when you when you move players or when a player makes a position switch, especially from one side of the ball to the other, you could tell pretty quickly if they've got a natural feel for it or not. And uh, Michael did play a little bit of offensive line uh, in in high school. We actually offered him as an offensive lineman. Uh, actually before we even offered him as a defensive lineman. And so uh, we liked the potential coming out of high school and saw um, – and, and when we moved him there this spring, we saw some of the same qualities that flash. He does some really good things naturally. He's one of those guys that you you hope over over summer has – has really made the gains that he needs to as far as understanding our system and the techniques and just really, you know, knocking some of the rust off playing that position. But he, he certainly has the talent to contribute without a doubt. Jason Kersey. Yeah, Lincoln, I noticed in your opening team you did mention Jalen Redmond. Is he full go um, and has he been all summer? Yeah, he's been uh, – he's, he's done well all summer. Uh, we don't anticipate any limitations with him. Um, uh, so, yeah, he, he's done well and uh, progressed well. And, again, give a lot of credit to to him and, and to our, our medical team and strength team for having to work together uh, through that. But uh, never any guarantees uh, with any of this. But he's, he's certainly doing extremely well right now. Jerry? Uh, Lincoln, I know you guys spoke highly of LaRon Stokes in the spring. Um, how much do you, get, as an offense guy, do you kind of keep your eye on some of those you know, defensive line and edge rushers that you guys kind of desperately need in this program right now? Oh, certainly. I mean, that's, you know, you're the head coach. you got to kind of keep your eye on everybody. You know, it's part of the job description. So, yeah, I, I, 
it's it's no doubt a huge factor. Uh, I think you know, from having an offensive background, you understand how those guys can can change the game, change preparation. You know, one, one great defensive lineman anywhere can probably change the game like no other. I mean, I you know, I've said it before. I mean, even like in the Alabama game last year, uh, you know the you know Quentin Williams, even though I think he ended up having one or two tackles maybe in the game had no stat line at all, but I mean, he was, he, he just completely changed the game and made things a lot more difficult. A lot of things that we had to do uh, around him. So great defensive linemen, they're hard to come by and we've really worked hard to, to recruit and develop those guys and got some older guys that, that we think are ready to step in and be great players. Uh, and then, you know, some new exciting guys, Leron certainly in that category. And, and he was, uh, he, he did a nice job this spring, certainly. Is it in that position, when you're looking for pass rushers, is that something sometimes a young guy can come in and maybe excel early where it might be a little bit more uh, complicated at other positions on defense? Uh, I don't know if I can compare it to other positions. I, I think there's opportunities to come in at any spot. Uh, but uh, certainly, I mean, you, I think that's whether it's a situational deal, uh, uh, which is probably a little bit more of what you're asking. You know, certainly, you could limit on maybe what you do with the guy, and he doesn't have to learn the whole thing. But, you know, with the quality of offenses and all the different schemes that we face week in and week out, you know, guys are only good at one or two things. That, that only lasts so long. So, uh, But having that ability to win on the edge and, and win in those one-on-one -on -one matchups certainly is a game changer. And we're working hard to recruit and develop as many of those guys as we can. Yeah. Coach, obviously a lot of success for you early in your head coaching career with the highs and winners, et cetera. What and who keep you grounded? Oh, uh, well, I was raised, uh, family, uh, I would say just my responsibility to the people that are part of this program or that this program means a great deal to them because those things are all well and good, but it's, it's, it's about right now. And this job is always about right now. You know, there'll always be time, you know, hopefully a lot later on to, to look back and reflect, but you know, that's, you know, hopefully that's a good 10, 15 years away, you know? So, uh, we'll, uh, and don't quote me on that. Uh, I know that'll be in there somewhere, but, uh, um, you know, you just, you just – there's so much each day, and you feel like you, you, time you could spend, you know, being happy about things that have happened in the past or looking back on it is time you're wasting that you could be helping your crew right now. And so uh, it's, you know, it's not hard. We, our goals are big, you know, and we want to continue to grow uh, We as a program. We want to we, – we, we feel like that – Despite some of the good things we've done, we've, we've got still a long ways to go, and we feel like that, and we're, we're hungry to accept that challenge and keep pushing on. Okay, Darren Amick. Yeah, Lincoln, you said something really interesting in Arlington. I want to uh, follow up on. You related what Alex is going through, stepping in and not just changing scheme, but culture and minds and things like that, to what you stepped into here four years ago on the, mm -hmm. on the other side of the ball. Right. What were the takeaways from what you learned from that experience that, that you might impart on him to make his job easier? It'd be tough to, in a session like this, to limit it. You know, there's, there's so much. Uh, and he's had experience doing it, too. You know, he had to go do the same thing at, at Washington State, and we all saw the results there. And uh, I, I think it's one, an understanding that changing culture and mentality is more important than changing scheme. Um, and I think, you know, I've said it many times, that's something that we both have a lot of belief in, and we both look at that from a very uh, very similar vantage point. And so having that, uh, I think that mindset is first and foremost. I think there's an, you've got to be able to come in and, and connect with guys early. You know, you didn't recruit the majority of these guys. You don't have long-standing relationships with the majority of these guys. Uh, we had a lot of, when I came in, we have we had a lot of key older guys that have been, you know, contributors or good players in the past. All of a sudden, you got to get them to buy into something new and develop the relationship and trust in a short amount of time. And, uh, and so we're, you know, Alex is building that towards that. Uh, I think he's done a great job of it. And then again, I think the last part of it's the scheme. I mean, every every place in America is going to have a scheme they believe in, and yeah, some can do it better than others. But the other stuff is is 
is is where it starts for us. And uh, you know, he's I don't know. I've had the it's just that I've had to you know teach him anything, anything like that. I mean, I, he had a I wanted to hire him because he had a similar vision too. So it's just been great conversations and and. Uh, uh, finding ways to try to make that transition as smooth as possible. Some of the bumps you hit in, in 15, was, was that part of you settling in? I, mean, that, I know it was, it was a, a lot of it was schematic, and you're trying to figure out how to use Joe and Samaje, for instance, together and things like that. But yeah. was, was part of that adjusting, still trying to get your, your hands and your, your mind wrapped around the, the culture? Sure. And everything? Oh, absolutely. I mean, I think uh, – Adjustment on my part, uh, and then adjustment on our players' parts. Uh, th there was uh, a lot of things behind the scenes that year, especially early. You know that that we had to go through and struggle through, but they led to, you know, us being the kind of group that we thought we could be there at the end of the year. And so, uh, it's you know, it's never easy. It's never. It's not. It's not like flipping a light switch. You know, there there's. A process that's got to take hold, and there's going to be tension, and there's going to be ups and downs with it. And you just, if you settle in there and stay steady, and if you've got the right guys in the boat as far as player wise, then 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 you it becomes a positive experience. You grow from it, and the trust relationships bond is 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 created, and then you take off from there. Eric Bailey, Lincoln. Over the last three or four years, you've almost had the ability to take the kicking game for granted. What are you looking for out of those new guys coming into fall camp? Yeah, consistency. You know, I would say would be number one. I mean, there's they're they're all very talented. They're, you know, there's no doubt that we have the ability. You know, in that room right now, and it's the I think it's the consistency of what we want them to do. The sense of urgency, which you know, we've really seen from all the guys as you know this opportunity has has unfolded for them, and and they know this is kind of their time to go get it. And uh, we've got great competition at those spots, and and then also they've had a great example here the last few years of, of you know how to train, how to really you know handle yourself like a pro. Uh, Austin Seibert just you know, you know kind of really embodied all those qualities, and so learning from that, uh, I, I'm certainly excited for the opportunity to not have one guy doing all of them. It was great and a huge challenge at the same time, and difficult um, and probably not ideal. Uh, so uh, excited for some of the bright spots we saw from that in the uh, spring and kind of like when we talked about Michael Thompson earlier. I mean, another group that you're really excited to see what's the jump they've made this summer, you know, because that's one skill probably more than probably more than any other thing in football. You can practice the the special teams execution by specialists, whether it's snaps, holds, kicks, punts, whatever, you can practice that as close to game like in summer of anything else. It's hard to simulate, you know, getting at pads and blocking a big D lineman or a receiver going over the middle and get, catching and taking a hit. You can't always simulate that in summer. These guys can, they can do it just about everything without a crowd out there. And so uh, hopefully they've made a big jump. Jenny Carlson. Hey Lincoln, uh, another question on Alex. In the spring, he was he was fairly honest publicly, sometimes a little shockingly um, honest with some of the things he said about the defense and the struggles and and that sort of thing. How, if he was outwardly that way, I'm sure he was behind the scenes with the guys. How did he balance um, trying to build but also not shying away from what they were and what they needed to improve on? Yeah, I mean you can't you can't be scared to talk about the elephant in the room, you know, and 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 so you you've got to be real and and you've got to be honest in any way. The only way that you correct or change something is by, you know, not be afraid of of, of those moments, not being afraid of being honest of what you really see and having those real conversations uh, behind the scenes. And so, oh, he, uh, I think he, I think that's who he is. Uh, number one, uh, I think our players have gotten to know that and understand that. And I think they also see the, the work that's put into uh, what he and our defense are doing, the, the passion on the field, the passion in the meeting rooms, uh, the, the history of success. Um, so it's, it's, it works because they know it's going in the right direction. And they wor it works because they know it's real and he's going to uh, – He's going to hold them extremely uh, to an extremely, you know, high standard. But he's going to do that probably for himself even more, and uh, I think that's the key. Okay, uh, Tyler Palmer. Lincoln and Neville was one of the bigger uh, 
notable guys, I guess, that lost a lot of weight in the spring, but I, I saw a note earlier that uh, Dylan is down a ton of weight too. How big of a deal is that, that these guys are going to be a lot lighter now, and how noticeable is that going to be the way they play, you think? Yeah, you know, it's you know, our deal is going to is speed D, you know, and, and, and sometimes as you evaluate these guys, it's, it's trying to find an ideal weight where they can be at their best condition, the quickest, the fastest, the most explosive. Now, there is at some of these positions also the thought of, you know, you can't get too far under, you know, and so it's not like we've just recklessly said, you know, go in there and shed as much weight as you possibly can. You know, we've, we've had, uh, you know, long discussions and very detailed targets for these guys to hit, and they've done a good job buying into it. You know, they, they even started this spring, and I think – a lot of our guys were able to see just the results of, you know, they only had a short off-season period to trim some before spring ball, but I think a lot of our defensive linemen in particular felt the difference and we could see the difference. So the exciting thing is if, if you get five pounds closer to that target weight through summer, how much better is that? And so uh, we feel like we've got the size and girth to do what we need to do on the front. Uh, we wanted to be able to make those guys a little more active. And then also I think it's adjusting for the game. I mean, you – you play, you play a lot of plays. I mean, that's just the nature of football right now. And, uh, and so having those guys in great condition and able to play a lot of snaps is also a big part of it. Uh, on that note, uh, what are you looking for? What do you hope to see on your defense that you didn't see in the last couple of years in terms of just improvement? Like Harry talked about, you know, pressure on the quarterback on the second day. What, what are some of the things you hope to see? Yeah, I mean, I think there's a lot of obvious things. I mean, obviously, the more, you know, big plays you make, all that, it, you're going to play better defense. It all goes hand in hand. I, I, the two things I would say is, is is turning people over. I mean, that is, you know, there's there's nothing that can change a game quicker uh, than, than that. And, and, every, and every defense in America is capable of doing that. And so uh, um, I think turning people over. And then I would just, I, I know I've said it a lot, but just the consistency. I mean, great – Great units, great players, great teams do it all the time and and rarely have those down days. And so we've had flashes of great defense every single year that I've been here, but we've also had the ups and downs uh, that have plagued us. And so we've got to become a group that plays with the same mentality, uh, the same effort level, the same execution week in and week out, and we've got to continue to grow. And so, And I think if we do those things, then – the sacks, the turnovers, all the things statistically that we want to happen will happen. But uh, um, consistency and then turning the ball over, number one and two for me. Coach, knowing how important camp reps are <clears throat> for everyone, but certainly for quarterbacks, do you prefer to name a starter during camp, and do you anticipate doing that? Uh, that's fair to say I would prefer to. Normally, with as many reps as you get in this camp, uh, guys have had a chance to, to take what they learned in spring ball, you know, work through it in the summer, uh, clean up the things they need to clean up. I think you get a lot more accurate snapshot of where these guys are really at uh, as, as camp unfolds. And so uh, I would prefer to uh, because then, you you know, you're able to get it out of the way. Uh, you're able to, uh, you know, start to focus your reps in on a starter. Um, and and you know the, the team knows everybody knows and you can and you can move on. Um, but I haven't always done it that way. You know, my, my first year at East Carolina, we didn't name one until the first first game. So I am a, I'm not super experienced, but I'm experienced enough to know I darn sure I'm not nailing it down right now. So uh, we'll uh, we'll see how it unfolds. Uh, Lincoln, uh, second year of the four-game red uh, redshirt rule. Did you like the first year, and did it change anything for you guys in the way you did things? Uh, we did like it. I, I thought it was a positive rule. Uh, it, it did. It certainly, you know, a lot of conversations. I mean, weekly, if not daily, conversations about how you're how you're going to deploy those guys, um, and and so. And I think there will continue to be new situations that come up. I mean, you know, Caleb Kelly's an obvious example of a guy that going through an injury that has a red shirt year available that, you know, there may be some interesting decisions down the line with him depending on how his rehab goes. And so, you know, you just – it'll be uh, 
and we had some interesting ones last year, you know, some that we really went back and forth on and really tried to look at from every different angle. So it does, it, ha it has changed the game. I do think it's a positive. Uh, I think as the years go on, we'll continue to have more and more situations that we'll be able to learn from and continue to develop our philosophy. But I think a positive rule change and one that's discussed pretty often with us. Okay, we'll go to uh, Joey. Yeah, you said at Big 12 Media Days you didn't expect there to be a drop-off offensively. What are some reasons why you feel there won't be that drop-off, given everything that you guys are losing? Yeah, I mean, we lost a lot the previous year, too, and we lost a lot the year before that and the year before that, too. So, I mean, that's that's just college ball. You know, you lose guys, you plan for it, you know. I mean, that's 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 why we recruit, why we evaluate, why we develop guys behind the scenes. You know – you know, you don't always know if a guy's going to transfer out. You don't always know if a guy's going to leave early. But, you know, you know you're going to lose these guys eventually. And uh, you got to plan for those things. And so, you know, we feel like we have. Uh, we've got a lot of confidence in the players in that room, the coaches in that room. Uh, and that's just – I mean that's that's just our expectation level. I just that that it's not going to change. I mean that's just we're not going to let it change. Keegan on the left. With with Dana and Derek King waiting for you guys to start the season, is there a sense of urgency to kind of get the defense moving, maybe even more in the right direction um, during camp? Uh, I wouldn't say more. I mean I think we're we'd be moving with a pretty big sense of urgency no matter what, uh, but. Certainly realize that, that, that you know we're going to play a really good football team week one, and uh, it's going to be a lot of fun here Sunday night. You know, with the eyes of the country and the world on us, so that's going to be a blast. Uh, no question, they'll be you know very good offensively. You know, you know, Derek's a phenomenal player. Remember watching him all the way back in high school down in the Houston area, and obviously we know Dana's reputation, well deserved reputation as a coach and an offensive mind, and, and he's put together a quality staff there. So. It'll be a great challenge. It, it does. Uh, it's always, you know, it's always fun to play a, a really, really, really good opponent first. So it'll be, it'll be a fun one for sure. Yeah, go to Edward Ashaw. Gotcha. Going back to your quarterback competition, just what do you need to see out of those guys before you make a decision on your starter? Uh, I think. The command of command of the offense, command of of the offensive players, the unit, the unit as a whole. Uh, uh, you know, consistent productivity. Uh, guys are going to take care of the ball and and play the position that the way that we expect it to be played here. And uh, so, it's I don't know. It's just one of those things. Like kind of when you know, you know. You know, it's it's I've tried before to try to put kind of metrics to it or numbers to it or and and we evaluate. We we do evaluate stats, but I think it's more of a. It's more of a feel of that it's more than than just the numbers. It's it's the feel of the guy that's gonna not only produce and play the best, but also lead the best as well. Okay, Brandon you kind of, you kind of uh, he just kind of answered the question that I was gonna ask, but just kind of last year you kind of said you know or, or previous years you would like ten days prior was like the, to the opening game you would like to name a starter. Is that kind of where? Your timeline fits of the QB, or is it just like you said, play by year? Yeah, it's it's just kind of worked out like that the last few years. I mean, it was as we'd gotten that many reps, it was a, a point that we felt like we'd seen enough um, and and were ready to make that decision and still have enough time to 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 get uh, the starter enough reps to feel like have him ready to play the first game. So it worked out that way, but certainly no guarantees right now. I mean, it just, they all unfold differently. You know, they all do. I mean, I, the, to, to give you an example, the first year here when we had, uh, you know, uh, Baker, Cody and Trevor, you know, I, I was dead set on, I can't rip three of these guys forever. Um, now maybe two, you can go a little bit longer. So I, I at, at I went in saying that this certain day I'm a, I got to cut off a third guy, and I never did because they were like they were both all three playing so good we couldn't and we felt like we were getting the reps and moving in the right direction that we could afford to, to rep all three. Uh, you know who knows if that happens again. So it, my point being, you just always have to adjust and, and understand they're all fluid, they're all different. Uh, number one job is or the number one goal with it is just get the right guy, and so. That, that the philosophy behind it won't change. Okay, 
Time for just a few more. Jason Kersey. Yeah, Lincoln, given that he wasn't here in the spring, how does Spencer factor in when you're splitting reps during fall camp? Yeah, we'll find out. I mean, I with any true freshman for us, they're going to they're gonna get reps. Uh, the number of those are going to be on if they show that they're ready to earn, you know, a, a big bulk of the reps. Um, so we're not just going to throw a true freshman in there just because. Um, uh, but we are going to get him enough reps to see if he's ready to factor in this thing right now. And uh, if he is, we'll adjust. And if he's not, then we'll adjust. So, but uh, that's that's not only quarterback. That's kind of our philosophy with all freshmen. You want you want to have reps with the big boys, and you want to have the big chunk of reps, then come out here and prove it. Jenny, Lincoln, um, you know, obviously people will talk about the run of. Uh, transfers, Baker, Kyler, now Jalen, but Jalen's on a more condensed time schedule right. than those other two guys were. How does that factor into how you rolled out the offense, the learning? How, how have you adjusted to the to the time of him? Uh, the timeline it, it has been different. Uh, there, there's there's no doubt about it. I think I think the biggest adjustment is just continuing to spend time with him off the field of just just getting to know each other I mean I you, you can progress and teach it and you know it's been effective in the past because there's been there's been great relationships behind that and and a lot of trust built up behind that and so it, it to me the story is not so much of trying to get him caught up learning the offense it's more trying to build the relationships and trust that a lot a lot of times takes years and years you know whether that's trust with 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 me with other coaches with the players I mean that that to me is the the whole deal you know and I think if that can be developed at a high level the the scheme stuff will come and uh we we can get that taught and Jalen's been in a lot of different offenses a lot of different coordinators I mean he's 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 seen a lot of ball you know so I mean that's the 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 more intangible part of it if you will is probably the I think the bigger key John yeah, you've never, Lincoln, had to pick a kicker before. You've never, as a head coach, had to settle on, this is my guy. What methodology will you use to evaluate the kickers, and what criteria will you ultimately use to decide? Well, uh, there's going to be, I mean, production. I mean, those are a little bit easier thing to, to quantify. I mean, it either goes inside the uprights or outside of them. You know, that kickoff either lands in the end zone or it doesn't, you know, and so – and then, and then also some of the competitive kicks that we have, we, we, we create different situations for all of our specialists. And so we probably put a little bit more weight, uh, a little bit higher valuation on those. And then and then I'd be crazy not to heavily lean on a staff. I mean, our staff is so special teams heavy with with guys that have tremendous experience coordinating all over the, all over the country and have been in a lot of these. So it'll be a collaborative effort. Good friend. Uh, Coach, what are you expected out of C.D. Lamb this season, not only in terms of production, but also perhaps in terms of leadership, given his experience uh, out there? Yeah, he's got to be one of those guys that, that makes that, that transition that I think all great teams have to have. Maybe a guy that's been a good player that, that has not had to lead in the past because there's always been somebody there, and now all of a sudden there's nobody else there, and if you don't do it, nobody's going to do it. And it's that type of mentality. So... Uh, we've certainly seen bits and pieces from that. Uh, I think uh, the way he practiced this spring was just a, one, just a great example. And uh, he's certainly been more conscious of the leadership and taking ownership of that group. But, you know, certainly from a guy like him, you know, Nick Basquin, Calcaterra, Lee Moore, some of those guys that have been around here for a little while, we'll, we'll certainly need that from those guys.